Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the city of Haralt the Sane, the blighted city, home of the monster hunters and the church of Wodenaz, where Frigoberto and the Lady Ikera are visiting in their quest to go from one ruin to another. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Age of Wonders 3, a roleplay campaign where you, the viewer, gets to make the decisions. And let's talk about the decisions that you have made, because the second official Aurelian census is now closed, and we had 61 responses, so thank you so much for everyone who responded, and let's display the results. Now, first off, I know a lot of you are interested in who won the warden positions for the different wards, so let's announce the winners now. For the warden of Aurelia, the winner is Nick Roberts. Congratulations, Nick. Nick used to be the mayor of Aurelia, and now he'll have to deal with the warden, or the ward of Aurelia, which includes the cities of Aurelia and Geldorf. The warden of the Valley of Knowledge, moving up next, is Ermanon. Congratulations, Ermanon. Actually, I'm going to zoom out so we can see these wards. So there's Aurelia, and here is the Valley of Knowledge. That includes Haralt the Sane and Aquaresia. Now, the Warden, or the Ward, I should say, of Arctica, which includes Arcticana, Tamara's Fall, and Stoicana, this landmass here, separated by these mountains here, the Frostfang Mountains, I believe they are. The winner is... Oh, it was very, very close. But the winner is Kyonanon. Now, Kyonanon was our former... Pontifex Maximus, so we'll have to give up that position in order to be the Warden of Arcticana. Next, we have the new landmass of Helia, which includes the cities of Helia, Njordland, and Farmeria, this kind of snowy area here. And this one was also close, very close actually, but the winner who pulling out at the end was Cody Shading. So congratulations, Cody. And finally, the Warden of the Underground, which currently contains the cities of Leticia and Wanderer's Way, but will someday also contain a city here and a city here to start out with. The winner of that is Wolfric Stonefang. And Wolfric is actually the chief priest of the Great Wanderer, who is based in Wanderer's Way. So that is, that is somewhat relevant. All right, now, as to the more roleplay type questions... I asked what ward you consider home, and the majority, 45, well not the majority, but the largest group, 45% chose the ward of Aurelia, and that makes a lot of sense. That's where we first came into this world. This is probably still the most populated area when you think about actual Aurelian humans. I mean, there isn't much, I suppose, genetic difference between the Aurelian humans and the Helian humans. They all look alike and act alike, and pretty soon, within a few years, no one's going to be able to tell the difference, but these people are the long-term Aurelians, and this, of course, is the seat of the Aurelian government. Next, though, with 26%, so pretty high number, is the Valley of Knowledge. It appears that a lot of Aurelians are moving northeast into the Valley of Knowledge, probably because Wodenaz is the only god, really, that came through with us from the Old World, and so a lot of the Aurelian citizens feel very comfortable in the city devoted to Wodenaz, because that's a god they're familiar with. And then, surprisingly and very unexpectedly, the next highest was the province of Helia, where 10% of our council claims to have called their home. So I guess a lot of Aurelians moved over to Helia as soon as we conquered it. Maybe we were talking about imperial governors who were kind of managing the different cities and the different areas while we're working on the transition from one form of government to another quite possible. All right. And now the next one, and this one was quite interesting. This is what gods or what god specifically does your character most align with? And the winner, <laughs> if you could call it that, is I'm going to call it unconcerned. 18% of you chose to not follow any god. I was going to call them atheists, but you really can't do that because in this world the gods are very manifestly real. So you can't say there is no gods, or there are no gods, because they're interacting with people on the daily. Like, they interact with their followers visibly. Like, Stoica actually appears to Lord Frigoberto in dreams. Now, I guess the average the average Joe 
you know, blacksmithing in the city who worships Stoica probably doesn't see her on a day-to-day -day basis, but at the same time, she manifests herself enough, and the other gods do as well, that it's impossible to say they don't exist. So for those 18% of you who chose not to follow any gods, it's not because you don't believe in them, clearly, it's just because you don't care. So I'm just referring to your, your group as unconcerned. But the god that did receive the highest percentage of support, and again, this probably goes back to where all of our people are from, but is Wodenaz with 16.4% support. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is I am going to promote Herodbert Arangaz, the chief priest of Wodenaz, or the High Gothi, as it's referred to, as our new Pontifex Maximus. Not only was he Pontifex Maximus acting while Kyonanon was missing, but now that Kyonanon can no longer be Pontifex Maximus because he is uh, the ward of, was it uh, Arctica, then Hrodbert is now officially the Pontifex Maximus of Aurelia. So congratulations, Hrodbert. Now coming in second place with one vote less, but still, that's the way it goes, is Stoica. Coming in third place with 11.5% of the vote is the Great Wanderer. That was a bit surprising, but also kind of cool. So a lot of you guys like the Great Wanderer. And then finally, and this was super surprising, coming in fourth place with 9.8% of the vote was Helios, a relatively new god to the Aurelian pantheon. Perhaps his blooming of worship is because he's relatively new to the scene and the Aurelians aren't very familiar with him. So they're like, hey, it's a new god. Let's check it out. I don't know. But almost 10% of Aurelians worship the god Helios. So there you have it. The next and final question was for the title cards. What unit of ours would you like to showcase on our title cards? And it was actually a three-way tie for the winner. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do because you can only show two units. But the winners are the Airship, the Phalanx, and the Monster Hunters. So I guess what I'm going to do, because we haven't really produced many Phalanx yet, is I'm going to start off with the Airship and the Monster Hunters starting with episode 40. And then... If we get to episode 50, then we'll do the Phalanx and one of the other ones that were close. Let's see, what are some of the ones that were close? Swordsmasters, Warbreed, and Berserkers. So we have, you know, 30 episodes worth of title card images. That's fine. It'll work well for us. All right. So that's the end of the census. I'd like to thank all of you for participating. 61 people is great. I'm really happy about that. Maybe sometime in the future we can get like 100. That would be amazing. But still, thank you very much for participating, and let's get back to the story. As you all know, we are going to be attacked by the March of the Troll King in one turn, it looks like. So we better be ready for that. I've never experienced this before, so I can't tell you whether it's going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy, or if it's going to be really, really hard. There is a domain invasion at Geldorf. Ah, there they are. So spiders that took out our airship. Who is really in a good position to, to deal with them? The Stoic and Garrison can probably take them out. But then they're going to have to rush back to Stoica. Or Stoicana, I mean to say. And thanks to all of you in the comments who kind of explained it to me. So now I understand that random wandering groups of monsters do not need a spawning site in order to spawn. They can spawn anywhere you don't have vision. Although it appears that I have vision pretty much everywhere around here. So it must have been underground where they first came from. I'm not even sure what causes vision. Like, do you automatically get vision inside your area of influence? I bet you, you do. But like, yeah, I have no vision here, for example, in this little corner. But I have vision, you know, all the way over here. There's no vision here. So I don't know if this is dangerous or not. Maybe I should build a tower here or something. I don't know if, like, horrible creatures can spawn from these two. Not entirely sure. But anyway, let's do this battle. Actually, we don't want the builder in the battle, though. That was kind of a mistake on my part. Let's move the builder back up. And since our mounted archers are the only ones with the movement points able to get to these guys, they're going to lead the attack. All right, here we go. We 
we're used to fighting in IC territories now, especially the garrison of Stoicana, since they are in the ward of Arctica. This is actually an interesting battle because we fight very few battles that aren't being led by a hero. Let's see. I want to take out that queen, but she's going to take a lot of time, so we might as well get rid of her babies first because they can web us, which means we're pretty much completely vulnerable to everything. Dang it, but there's a penalty. Okay, well, let's just get... There we go. Swords Masters can take a hit. And Mounted Archer is perfect. Let's keep them safe behind the Monster Hunters. More Swords Masters. Let's just put them here, but let's not attack with them. Let's get them in defensive stance. Because again, they could take a hit. And the Archers... Ooh, this one's tough. I'm going to move up one space further so that I can get a little bit of extra damage. Well. Let's just, yeah. How are we doing with mana? We have plenty. What the hell? Oh, action points. Okay. 862. Is it just me, or does this look all smushed to you guys? Well, anyway. We have plenty of mana. Alright. Here we go. Let's see what they do. Oh, good move. Alright, so the spider went after our archers, but severely hurt itself in the process. So I don't know if I'd consider that a good move. Swords Masters. Alright, now that they're... Oh, no, we still can't flank them. But we can with the Monster Hunters. Yep. Excellent. So now with our... Oh, we could flank the Spiders with our Mounted Archers. And done. And they gained a level. Good for them. The armies of Aurelia have become a lot more tactically proficient. Alright, let's get everybody back up to the city. Alright, Lashanti. We're doing pretty well in Lashanti, actually. I guess everybody's just going to hang out because... This will be the guard for boats. More boats coming from Carl's Land. Now that we have a pretty good army, we could probably take out any boat he sends. I just want you to stay here, please. All right, holy moly. Lots of things happening. It looks like these guys still are just hanging out. They don't necessarily want to attack Druze, which is fine by me. What's happening here? Our lost mariners are being attacked by the trolls. Oh shoot, here come the trolls. Shoot, it's a very likely defeat too. I hope they don't attack a spard. I didn't know they'd come so fast. I thought we'd see them. Alright, this could be a huge problem since both of our heroes are out in the open. Hopefully we can tire them out a little bit here. Let's see. Trolls regenerate, I believe. Alright, these are mariners. So... Panic, not a good choice. It only has a 35% chance of working. It'll do about a third 
of the damage from them. I guess stone skin. I don't know what else to do here. I mean, we're in rough times here. Let's just make it so that we can all fire at once. Oh, forgot about the flanking trolls. Shoot. Okay. Let's look at our friends, the trolls. Alright. They're what you would expect a troll would look like. They have night vision, cave crawling... Okay, regrowth, yes. So, 20% health each round of tactical combat. Wow. They do have Guard Breaker, which hurts, for example, our Swords Masters. Demolisher. Wall Crushing. They are monsters, so our Monster Hunters will do well against them. Alright, so our plan needs to be to take out one at a time. Well, at least our Mariners have good morale. This is going to be our last free turn, essentially. Next turn, they're going to hit us with everything they've got. Oh, does Stone Skin make you, make you slow? Oh, shoot. Well, that's no good. But it does make sense. You know, that, that does make sense. Alright, one unit down, anyway. Well, you know, the Lost Mariners are holding on. Alright, what do we got? Let's take out... Oh, we can't shoot anymore? That's okay. Let's see if we can net these guys. Excellent. Problem is, nobody can really get to them. Yeah, these guys will get double attacked. Let's see if we can net another group. Nope. Alright, well that's the end of our Lost Mariners, I'm pretty sure. It's sad that they're gaining all these levels and just to die. Alright, the Stone Skin unit is actually holding its own, so that's a valuable spell. 43. There's nobody really super hurt. I was looking for the most hurt troll. 48. I guess it's these guys at 43. But there's no way we can... Well, we could shoot them, I guess. Alright, that was pretty good, guys, actually. Way to go out with a bang. Oh, then we ensnared these guys for no purpose, but whatever. And we'll see if we can finish these guys off. All right. Well, we managed to get two units of trolls off the table before losing all of our mariners, sadly. All right. Let's put our two heroes together. Please. Yeah, we're going to leave what's his face's hero to the to the trolls. Let Carl's hero deal with them. We're going to get to Drew's. It doesn't appear like these guys are really actually going to attack. They're just kind of flying around looking menacing. 
Can Satura take out trolls? Oh, look. They have two armies. Or no, this is the same army they just moved. Alright, well. Satura's gonna head him off at the pass. Alright, we can research a skill. Wow, two turns to Manticore Rider? Caster's units require negative 25% gold upkeep outside their domain. Well, most of our units right now are in our domain. So that's not that useful. Berserk, I could learn immediately. So could I learn Regenerate Walls or Trail Running. Wow, our research is amazing. There must have been, yeah, a research breakthrough in Leticia. All right. We're going to do a Manticore Rider. Gregor Guardbreaker, a level 5 Warlord. Warlords are pretty good. All right, why not? Well, I'm still looking for an Archdruid, actually. I require another type of hero. Let's see if we'll get an Archdruid. Wanderer's Way. Yeah, two two of these guys are not going to fight off a horde of trolls. So let's go with some long swordsmen, just to kind of fill the gap. And then an archer. That'll give us... Actually, two archers. That'll give us six units in total. Leticia is fine. So Leticia, what is their bonuses again? We get the focus chamber. Actually, let's look at the city. Which gives archer units a plus. And I think we have a... Ca yeah, stables of vigor. So horse archers, so that's why we're producing them here. Because they have a cavalry plus an archer bonus. But we could use that for other things too. Other archers and other mounted units. Monster hunters are not considered archers. They're considered irregular. Yeah, really, we don't have much we could do here. I think we should still produce mounted archers. That's really what this place is good at. They're not expensive. Otherwise, I'll have to invest a whole lot of money in other buildings. A master's guild might be interesting. But not necessary just yet. You know, let's just bell tower this place up, just in case we get in a war with Dwemus or monsters attack. We don't really still know what's happening up here, so a bell tower should help a little bit. Geldorf. Now that's interesting. What I mean, Geldorf really doesn't excel at anything except for swords masters. They do have shock cavalry. They're one of the few places in our empire that have that. And they have priests now, which is pretty good too. And since they're support units, they get a little extra bonus. If I could clear out this dungeon, then that just helps income. Prevents the construction of slaughter pits, though. I wonder what those do. Those might do something really cool. We'll never get this ancient ruins. It's just outside. Oh, we have two dungeons here. Now, I wonder, if you have two separate dungeons, if you can build both the Enchanted Treasury and the Slaughter Pit, or if it doesn't matter how many dungeons you have, it all ties together. That, I don't know. But for right now, Geldorf only has four people guarding it, although three of them are Swordsmasters. But let's throw out some archers. Actually, a priest and an archer. That'll give us six people. There's that hero we don't want over in Helia. We have Preston's army here, plus some of these guys. That's fine. This place is fine. Wow, we can produce cavaliers with a little extra experience. I didn't know that. Oh, gold-level archers, too. Gold-level shot cavalry. I guess we could sell our Dreadnought's Foundry, since we can't do anything with it, and it'll give us some gold. I just want to see what kind of bonus buildings we have here. Oh, we could sell the Blast Furnace, too. So we do have the Pillar of the Stylites. And the Mercenary Camp. Wow, he has a Grand Palace here. Good for him. So Irregular Units benefit here. All right, everybody gets visionary trait. What does that mean? 
Dedicated to good and gains one resistance. And the resourceful ability, which is, uh, after performing an action, this unit gains one of the following buffs for one turn. Chosen at random. Two defense, two resistance, two melee strength, 200 happiness, 100% XP, so I guess double XP, or eight movement. Okay. Oh, I guess in battle? This, this happens, like, every turn in battle? I don't know. Weird. So Helia is, like, actually the most developed city in our entire empire. No wonder so many people want to move here. Well, let's get a look at it. Alright, so you're surrounded. You're in the city. You're looking out. To the north, you have mountains. Some farmlands and mountains, as you can see. To the east, you have a giant node. To the south, you've got forests. Very thick forest in the coast, and a little bit of swamps here to the southeast. You have a magma forge and more forest to the south, or southwest, yeah. And then to the west, we have more mountains, and further west, what appears to be a giant glacier. To the far, far northwest of Helia, you have a trading post, which makes sense. This is the largest mountain in the area that appears. Well... Yeah. Oops. This mountain here is... Oh, there we go. Yeah. This, yeah, this is probably the tallest mountain. Maybe Mount... Uh, Mount Helios. Or we could do Mount... Uh, what was that, guys? What was the, the enemy? The former enemy? Leonis? Mount Leonis? To kind of balance out Mount Frigoberto? Interesting. All right. But we still didn't do anything here, so let's do something. Money's pretty good. There's really no... I guess we could build warlord units. I mean, no reason not to, but... I just want to kind of specialize my cities. We could make it a sanctuary city. <laughs> um, actually, a builder wouldn't hurt if we don't already have one. Although now, during troll, troll season, it's not exactly a great time. Although I think the trolls... Now that I look at it, I think the trolls have to appear in places that I can't see them. Because there's nothing here anywhere in our actual domain, if you'll notice. No trolls. Where did the trolls come from? Oh, wait. Is that, no, that's our war breed. But yeah, the trolls are coming from the shadows. So... I don't feel that nervous in our homelands about them. I know we skipped Helia, but actually, we are going to deal with the trolls and upgrading the rest of our cities in the next episode. I guess our empire has become so incredibly large, and I took so much time in this episode explaining the results of the census that we weren't able actually to do a whole lot. But uh, soon, we're going to have Mad Score Riders, which is going to be really fun. And the city of Aurelia is going to specialize in that, because they have the world's largest warlord's keep. And that's what they're all about. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. My name is Marcus Aurelius. This is Age of Wonders 3, a roleplay campaign where you, the viewer, gets to make the decisions. Have a good one.